Hey everybody, it's time to tune in and turn on your happy. You're watching The Kelly Williams Show. Don't forget, you can watch it anytime on the best network ever, your home TV. And you can also stream it live on Roku. So get ready, because it's time for The Kelly Williams Show. It's Kelly Williams with the Kelly Williams Show, Bay Area Houston Magazine, and your home TV. And it's time for the Kelly Williams Show. <laughs> All right. I'm so excited because we are right here at Best Shot Range in Friendswood, Texas. And I'm with the amazing Tony Ashcraft, president of Black Rifle Company, guys. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Tony. So um, where are you from? Well, I was born uh, right here in Houston, and I've lived out in Pearland for about 21, 22 years. Okay, so you're, you're a pretty local guy. Very local, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. How long have you been shooting? Well, I've, you know, I've always shot since I was a, a kid. Uh, yeah. I started out hunting with my dad, and as I got a little older, my taste changed a little bit, so I went more to handguns and sporting rifles, things like that, but... Uh, yeah, all my life, really. Okay, that's very nice. Um, okay, so today we are talking about, you know, the, the world is a very different place. And we actually have a, a fabulous live audience of a bunch of hot women today. <laughs> and uh, for the show, and they have submitted questions directly to you to answer on the show. And we're going to start off our show with those. This is going to be a little bit more of a serious show today. Um talking about things we're dealing with, how to keep yourself safe, how to keep your family safer, and if you already own a gun or if you are thinking about owning a gun, that is who the show is um, geared toward today. So let's go ahead and start with some of these questions from our, our studio audience. Terry Miller asked, do I have to have a license to carry a gun? Uh, no, you don't. At one point in time in the state of Texas, you did. You have to get a license to carry. You have to go through the class, through the process, the application fee, all that good stuff. But recently, uh, Texas passed constitutional carry. And uh, as it should be in all 50 states, it's not yet. But you can carry a firearm, firearm on your person, either concealed or open carry if you choose, as long as you're not otherwise prohibited. So... If you're a felon, uh, you can't tote it under constitutional carry. So there's some things that will get you in trouble. But as a general rule, if uh, you know if you're a good guy, no, nah, you can you can carry constitutional. I think all these people are, are, are pretty good people. They look like pretty good people. I don't think we have to worry about <laughs> no, that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, awesome, hey, Tony. So April Blondo asks, what type of handgun is best for a woman's self-defense? Automatic or single shot? Well. Uh, I don't know that a single shot pistol would help you out in a defensive situation. Um, you could tell them to wait. Hey, hang on one <laughs> you second. Could. Hold on, I've got one more shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, semi automatic is always, I, I would always lean towards that because it's, in general terms, they carry more rounds, you know, you get more ammunition, and that's always a good thing. Um, to, to answer the question about what is the best weapon is, pretty complicated because not everybody is the same. People have different hand strengths. They have different levels of experience. You know, some people have shot in the past and now have decided that they want a concealed carry. Some people have never held a gun in their life. So it's going to be different for each person. And depending on what kind of hand strength you have, how big your hands are, how small your hands are, and just a matter of just preference because guns feel different in the hand. And in addition to a weapon having to be reliable and easy to use, you've got to be able to reach the controls. You've got to be able to manipulate it correctly. You've got to be able to hold it in your hand right. Because if all of those things don't fall into place, then it's not going to work for you. It's not the gun for you. So the way that you can sort of go down the line of what you might want or what you might not is a Best Shot Ranger is a great example. They have weapons. If you want to come in here and shoot, they have weapons that you could rent uh, here. So you can come in here and say, let me do that one. Take that one out, go out on the range, put some rounds through it, see if you like it, see what you like about it, what you don't like. 
and sort of go down the line from there. Uh, I will say a lot of times, uh, I've heard people in the past say that uh, when they go to their local big box store to pick up a firearm and they ask that question, usually the part-time 23-year-old guy behind the counter <laughs> will tell them, get this because I have one. And that's the worst answer ever. So that guy's gun may or may not be a good gun, but is it a good gun for you? And that's the part that you have to add to the end of that question. Yep. Not what gun is good, but what gun is good for me? And I think through, you know, some, I don't want to say trial and error, but, you know, like I said, you come into a place like Best Shot and you can shoot those guns, try them out and see what's good. Also, you know, is there a caliber of pistol that usually women tend to buy more than others are you, that you see? Well, you know, obviously in general, not just with women, but nine millimeters. Statistically, okay. the vast majority of the guns manufactured these days are in nine millimeter. And uh, nine millimeter, the ammo is readily available. If you get like a 380, let's say as an example, is the other one that's kind of popular. 380 is, doesn't quite have the ballistics that a nine millimeter does. And with the availability of nine millimeter everywhere, and then there's so many different variations of nine millimeter ammunition. There's target range ammo, which is really soft. So if you're a new shooter and you're having trouble with the recoil, you can pick up something a little softer. There's all What's kinds What's a of recoil? I'm sorry, you're doing that. This is, goes over my head a little bit. Sorry, so when you fire the <laughs> weapon, you know, the, uh -huh. The, the kickback that you get. Oh, the kickback. Yeah, okay. there you go. So, so the recoil of the weapon would be softer with a target or range ammo versus okay. a standard load ammunition or even some self-defense loads are a little bit hotter and they're going to produce more recoil. So again, if you're new to shooting and it's kind of your first venture into this and you really want to get the mechanics down of shooting, you can go and get a softer ammunition shoot it that way. But yeah, definitely nine millimeter. It, it's, it, it, there's plenty of it out there. Again, it's really popular and relatively affordable. These uh, days. Okay. That's great. Okay. So, you know, I don't know how many pe women wear garters anymore or things like that. However, Jennifer Moran wants to know what is the best way to conceal your weapon when you have it on you? That's a really good question. Maybe Jennifer uh, does have the little garter. Maybe the she does. Gun holder. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, when, when you're thinking about the best way to conceal, you have to be able to have access to that firearm because you carry your firearm for personal protection in case something goes really, really bad. So if you have it stuck way down in some weird holster, tucked under a bunch of layers of clothing Your where nobody shoes. can see it. Yeah, it's somewhere where you can't get to it and something is going to go bad, then that makes obtaining that weapon and defending yourself a little bit challenging. So, uh, you know, I would say uh, there's a lot of different companies that make different holsters and inside the waistband, outside the waistband. Uh, there are some options for carrying inside a purse. And also, uh, a lot of people carry based on, literally based on what they're wearing. Yeah. Um, some folks will, in the winter, when we have a jacket on most of the time, you know, people will carry with, the, with their firearm inside their jacket. Uh, there's a lot of different, different things, and that would really be something that's more of an individual thing. Yeah. But, the, the, again, the short answer is, you need to carry it where you can have access to it, where that weapon is going to be secure on your person so it doesn't fall out, and where you can get to it if you need it. Okay, because, you know, Texans like to wear boots. And so, you know, shoving a gun in your boot, you know, that seems like the kind of fun, cool way to do it. But <laughs> that would be a little bit difficult if you're trying to run it and grab be. a gun it out of your be, boot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, so Susie Imhoff, she says, she has another question. She said she is totally petrified that her gun will accidentally go off while she's carrying it. What is the best way to conquer her fear of this? Because this mm. is a really, really important question that so many people struggle with d daily right. when they're carrying a gun. And that's absolutely something to be concerned with. Uh, what I would say is that 
The vast majority of manufacturers these days, the Smith & Wessons, the Springfields, the SIGs of the world, uh, they realize what these weapons are going to do, what their job is. And if the job is concealed carry, they know that obviously you don't want to get shot with your own gun. Yeah. So these manufacturers have that in mind because the last thing a gun manufacturer wants to do is get sued over an accidental discharge and get that bad press from an incident like that happening. So I would say it's safer than you might think. Uh, a lot of manufacturers, especially with concealed carry, there's, they'll build in, a, uh, build in a trigger safety. So that trigger safety has to be depressed before the trigger can be pulled. Some of them have a grip safety on the rear. So both of those things have to be engaged before the firearm will discharge. There's all kinds of safety measures without getting too technical in the weeds with these things. But gun manufacturers have this in mind. And, you know, unless you're just buying some bottom of the barrel used pawn shop piece of junk, I would say you're going to be, you're going to be safe. You're going to be safe. Now, if you are going to carry it in a purse, a handbag, you do have to be cognizant of other things that you may have in there. Keys, makeup, whatever. I don't yeah. know what women carry in their purse. Yeah. A lot of stuff. I don't know. You're pretty close now. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to be cognizant of, of those things. And... Uh, I would say if that is something that concerns you, uh, you could get a small holster to keep the gun in inside your purse that would cover up the trigger guard area. Yeah. Now, that's going to keep something from getting in the trigger guard. The thing that you have to consider, again, is if you have to reach for that weapon and you pull it out of your purse, there's going to be a holster stuck on the end of it. So you're going to have to be aware that you've got to take that off in order to use that firearm. Yeah. You know, Jennifer Moran had a, an, another question earlier um, that I thought was really interesting because I think this is what a lot of people think about. She was talking about, you know, a lot of guns, the trigger is so stiff and hard to pull. It, do you think, and, and it, was that kind of going to what you talk about? They make them where it's really not, it's done on purpose. So you right. can't, so you really have to focus I'm pulling that trigger. Yeah, that's it. They definitely don't want a, a very light trigger in a yeah. concealed carry. And, you know, again, if it's, you got to think about it. If, if you have a really light trigger and you have to pull your weapon under a stressful situation, and it's one thing to go out here on the range and put holes in paper because paper doesn't shoot back. Paper's not about to kill you. Paper is not breaking into your home in the middle of the night. Paper is not threatening you in any way. So you got all day. There's no timer. Uh, when you have to pull a weapon out in, again, in a high stress situation, your finger is going to be probably putting a little squeeze on that trigger, yeah. you know, right, you know, right off the bat. And you definitely don't want that accidental discharge. Again, you don't want to shoot yourself. You don't want to shoot somebody that's around you. You know, you only want the bullet to go where the bad guy is. And so, yeah, the triggers are generally not very good on concealed carry guns uh, for that reason. Um, we're going to talk more gun safety and give you a lot of really good information right after this commercial break. P3 Roofing provides knowledge and service in the roofing industry in the greater Houston area. What sets us apart is the customer service. It's what the three P's stand for, professional, personal, principal. Of course, you're always going to give somebody a chance and they blew me out of the water and my clients out of the water. I was most impressed by the efficiency. I blew my mind that it could be all done in one day. Their work is above and beyond. We work with the insurance companies to make sure you don't get cheated. Call P3 Roofing today for a free consultation. I want to, I want to ask a question that we just talked about a little bit earlier about um, the concealed license. Mm -hmm. Shelly Garrido asked, um, if you decide to get a concealed license to carry, how much do they usually run and how long does it take somebody to get that? Uh, it's usually a one day process. Okay. And I think the state of Texas, I forget what the, the fee is to the state, but it's... it's is it minimal? Yeah, it's, okay. it, it's less than $50. It used to be a little bit more expensive. And then classes vary from uh, instructor to instructor. Okay. Uh, so you call around and find out who's got a good class. And once you submit all your information, 
Uh, once you do the class, you'll get uh, an LTC 100, which is the uh, kind of the, the, hey, I finished my class paperwork for the state of Texas. And you'll upload that along with uh, some information off your driver's license. They use your old driver's license photo. In about three weeks, your LTC will come to your house okay. and you will be official. One thing that people always wonder about is when you travel from state to state, what, what are the guidelines on that about carrying a gun? Well, if a, another state has reciprocity with the state of Texas, meaning that that state recognizes your valid LTC that's issued by the state of Texas, uh, generally you can carry just like you carry here. Now, there, we have open carry here as an example in the state yeah. of Texas, so you can carry where everybody can see it. There are some states that don't have that. So you can't say, hey, I'm in this state over here, but in Texas they let me open carry, so I'm going to open carry here. That's not going to work. You have to follow whatever that state's regulations are with carrying. And uh, if you happen to be in other states and you happen to make contact with anybody from law enforcement. Yeah, you get a ticket or something like that where you have to show information to a... An officer. Right. You should always let that law enforcement officer know at the top of the encounter that, hey, I have an LTC and I'm carrying my weapon today. And they will tell you what they want you to do. And if you constitutionally carry as well here in Texas, you should notify law enforcement as well. It's just, it's just smart, you know. It yeah. makes them more comfortable and it makes the encounter go well uh, because hey, there's potential for issues if you forget to mention that or don't mention that you know it's just you, you gotta you gotta let them know sure okay now so so many people fly as as you do mm -hmm. from place to place um, out of state out of the country I'm not sure but what what is the best practices um, when you are carrying your firearm but generally uh, airlines are gonna make you check in the weapon obviously you can't take it on the plane so don't do that that's <laughs> that's a really bad. It's a really bad thing. Uh, but you'll check it in like a uh, like baggage, and I would always call the carrier ahead of time, and okay. tell them what you're going to do, and get specific instructions from them. But you're going to want to have a uh, uh, an approved carrying case, and those are a little bit more expensive. A lot of airlines will hold you to that, so make sure that you have whatever their requirements are. But yeah, you definitely got to notify them. It, it's pretty easy. Uh, we flew to Arizona recently, and we were in and out. It took us about, I don't know, 10 minutes to check the weapon in, and it was pretty easy. But That's we not did, bad. We did call ahead of time just to make yeah. sure that, see if there were any extra details that uh, we were not aware of. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely doable. All right. Thank you. That, that's really important information. You can watch The Kelly Wing Show anytime on your home TV. And we hope you have an awesome and blessed rest of your day. And we'll see you soon. Woo!